Counting calories is dumb. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a new way to think about this in addition to my previous videos about, about why counting calories is stupid, ignorant, moronic, and other adjectives. But today we're gonna to talk about why counting calories is dumb with regards to losing weight, AKA losing fat. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with over 20 years of clinical practice and previous experience being severely obese. And so I lost the weight and I'm gonna help you lose the weight also. Now, if you listen to many, many healthcare and nutrition gurus out there, they'll say, it's simple. You just have to eat less and move more. You have to burn more calories than you ingest. And right off the bat, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play you a little clip here and I want you to listen to this. And then we're gonna talk about why all of this is dumb. I wanna to talk to you guys today about the mathematics of weight loss. Weight loss is a simple science. Right? Fat is simply stored energy, okay? And the calories in your food are units of energy, okay? If we eat more energy than we burn in a day, we will store that energy as fat. So really, if you look at something called the law of thermodynamics, it's a fancy way of saying that energy isn't created or destroyed in a vacuum. I have repeatedly told you that counting calories is the fundamental tool you will need if you want to lose weight. So when you hear calories talked about that way and you hear somebody say that fat is just stored calories, right off the bat, that, that's a completely ignorant statement, okay? Fat is stored tissue. It is mass. It is, it, it is made up of molecules and atoms, okay? It's not stored energy. That is a completely inaccurate way to describe what fat actually is. So there, you hear the, the law of thermodynamics thrown away, around in the nutrition and the healthcare space all the time, there are three laws of thermodynamics and they all deal with energy, saying that energy can neither be created nor destroyed and other things like that, which is absolutely true. But is the fat stored on your butt, the fat stored on your thighs, in your belly, in your liver, is that stored energy? Is that really what this is? Uh, it, no, it's not, it's not at all. And so here's what you have to understand. When you eat food, your body digests that and you wind up breaking bonds between atoms. And that's where the energy comes from. We use enzymes and we use energy to break those bonds to glean more energy from the food that you've eaten. Now that energy can go many, many places. It cannot be created nor destroyed. That's absolutely true. But it can be dissipated as body heat. It can be uh, dissipated in a number of different ways as both chemical energy um, radiant heat energy and other forms of energy, but it's not mass. So if you look at a fat molecule or a protein molecule or a carbohydrate molecule, we can actually break the bonds in these molecules to create energy, to run our other body processes. But what are they all made up of? They're made up of atoms. Okay. Now there's this thing in your, in your bathroom probably on the floor, and it looks like this. Now, what does this thing measure? Does it measure energy or does it measure mass, right? So in order for something to show up on the bathroom scale, it has to have mass. Now, energy does not have any mass that we currently know about. So when you say, oh, if you eat so many calories, that's going to become so many pounds of fat, that is also an ignorant statement. That makes no sense whatsoever. You're basically saying, oh, somehow in our magical human body, we converted energy into mass because the bathroom scale does not weigh energy, okay? You can shine a, a, a very bright, brilliant light. Uh, you can shine a heat lamp on your scale all day long, put lots of energy on it. It's gonna register zero pounds. What your bathroom scale measures is mass. How many atoms are standing on the scale, okay? Now, 
There is this other law called the, the law of conservation of mass, which says that in a chemical system, uh, mass cannot be created nor destroyed. And that's also absolutely true. But that's the law that we should be focusing on because when you stand on the bathroom scale, you're measuring mass. You're not measuring energy. And we do not store energy as fat. Fat is made up of carbon atoms, of nitrogen atoms, of oxygen atoms, hydrogen atoms, and a few other assorted atoms. That's what causes that number on the scale to go much higher than you'd like for it to go. Now, currently, even the most ardent uh, calorie in, calorie out people will admit to the fact that a thousand calories of ribeye is much different than a thousand calories of uh, Lucky Charms. They'll admit that right off the bat. Yes, your body doesn't deal with that in the same way. Uh, and that's absolutely true. And so what you have to look at when you're eating food is you have to look at what is this food going to do to my hormone levels? What is this food going to do to my levels of inflammation? What is this food going to do to my levels of insulin and glucagon and uh, the different neuropeptides that are in charge of hunger and of satiety? That's what matters if what you're trying to do is lose fat. Because when you say, I want to lose weight, what you really mean is, I want to lose fat. You don't want to lose muscle mass. You don't want to lose bone density. You don't want to lose your brain or your liver or your kidneys. You want to lose the damn fat. Fat is not stored energy. Fat is stored atoms. And what tells your body to store more food as fat <clears throat> is the chemical signal, the hormonal signal, the inflammatory signal that your body gets from the food that you eat. This is why when people go on a very low carbohydrate diet, a ketogenic diet, a ketovore diet, a carnivore diet, this is why they burn fat so much more easily while still being able to eat until they're comfortably stuffed than people who are trying to starve themselves on a calorie restriction diet or a portion control diet. Uh, and so that's the, that's the main takeaway message is when you get on the bathroom scale, you're measuring mass. You're measuring atoms in your body. You're not measuring energy, okay? And so right off the bat, you can say, well, okay, prove that to me. Okay, here's, here's a good way to prove it. How many calories does a liter of water contain? Zero, none. But if you, drink, if you weigh yourself on the scale, then you drink a liter of water, then you weigh yourself again, the scale will show a difference of exactly the weight of one liter of water. That doesn't mean you've, you've gained weight. That just means you drank a liter of water. The water also does not uh, stimulate inflammation. It does not stimulate your satiety hormones to go in the wrong direction or your hunger hormones to go in the wrong direction. Uh, it doesn't cause your insulin to spike. It doesn't cause your blood sugar to spike. And therefore, as soon as you have absorbed and metabolized the water, it's gone and your weight is right back to where you started. But when you eat high carbohydrate foods that are inflammatory, it's not that you ate too much food. It's not that you ate too many calories because a calorie is not a measure of food. It's not a measure of molecules or atoms. It is a measure of heat energy. That's what the calorie is, whether you're talking about the, the little C calorie, the big C calorie, or the kilojoule, depending on where you're at in the world. Engineers and chemists use calories to talk about heat energy, isn't that? That's exactly what it is. Now, because of the chemical processes that take place in our digestion and metabolism, we put off heat. That's true. But we, when you get on the scale, if what you're wanting to see is a lower number, then you need to stop the foolishness of trying to count calories and restrict calories. You need to start eating very, very low carbohydrate food that is uninflammatory to your body that tweaks your satiety hormones in the right direction and tweaks your hunger hormones to keep your hunger turned off for a long time. Uh, we know without doubt that if, if I lock you in my barn and I feed you 500 calories of food a day, you're gonna lose weight, but you're also gonna be ravenously hungry. You're gonna have mental fog. You're gonna be unsteady on your feet. You're not gonna feel like being productive. You're not gonna be happy. It's gonna suck. 
And this is what the calorie in, calorie out gurus out there, that, that literally is the life that they're trying to paint for you to live for the rest of your life. If you want to reach a certain number on the scale, then you need to starve yourself for the rest of your life. Well, the beauty of a proper human diet is you don't have to starve yourself. You don't have to calorie restrict or portion control. You get to eat human appropriate food that is delicious and nutritious, and you get to eat it until you're comfortably stuffed. When you're full, you stop eating and you don't eat again until you get truly hungry again. That to me sounds like a much preferable method for losing weight than being locked in my barn and slowly starving to death. So the next time you hear somebody say that fat is stored calories or that fat is stored energy or that uh, you need to eat fewer calories than you burn, you don't have to say anything. You can be very diplomatic and circumspect and just smile and nod knowingly. But that person does not know what the hell they're talking about when it comes to the way human beings metabolize and digest and use the foods that we eat. Now, I wouldn't mind at all if you shared this video with one of your friends who still thinks that counting calories is a really intelligent, smart, nerdy thing to do. And also, I wouldn't mind if you became a member of our private community. We've got over 5,000 folks in there whose single mission is to improve their health and to live a healthy, proper human life. There's a link down in the show notes if you want to join us there. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.